Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial for MarmorWorld.com. My name is Matthias Müll and today I want to show you how the position controls of pins and boxes are working, which are hiding behind this icon here. So I've prepared here an example. If you take a look at it, I already have a nice animation and I've rigged all of this here with pins and boxes. I've got these two texts and as you can see, both texts have already anchor controls applied to them, which we do with this icon and which I've shown you already in the first tutorial of this series. And so if I enter here a larger text, let's say text one has a second line, you can see the line itself is growing and the text is growing upwards. It's growing upwards because it has its anchor point at the bottom. Similarly, this text has its anchor point at the top and will grow downwards. And if you wonder how we actually created the line, let's take a look at the pins involved here. So we've got four pins, two at the bottom of the top text and two at the top of this bottom text here. And this line is essentially a box around those four pins and I've switched its settings from being a box to being just a horizontal line, making sure the anchor is placed in the center and adding some margin at the left and right side to make the line a bit wider than the actual text. Okay, so far everything is great. We have just one little issue. And this is if we preview the animation again with the new texts, you can see that the texts don't appear properly anymore. Or if I play it reverse, you can see only one line of text is actually disappearing here. And this is because our keyframe movement is not far enough. Here you can see on this first text here, we have some keyframe position and it just moves as far as we need it for one line of text. Now we have two lines of text and so it is not moving enough anymore. So one thing you could do is to say, okay, then let's change this keyframe here and move our text way down. Yeah, it, you, if you like want to support four or five, six lines of text, you need to go further and further down. The problem with this is, is that r it really does not preserve your easing. Yeah. So because if you now take a look from this animation, only the very last part is visible. And if you want to have an animation where like the text appears slowly and then gets faster and slows down again or something like this, it's very difficult to achieve it with such kinds of keyframes where most of your motion pass is not visible depending on how large your text actually is. If you keyframe it like for the largest text possible or something like this. Yeah? So this is not really a good solution and a much better solution is to use our position controls. Let's do this. We go here to the end and remove the keyframes we had. And let's do the same here actually for our second text. So and instead of keyframing the position of the two texts, I want to apply a position control to them. So I select both of them and click on position control. And now both of them, in addition to the anchor control that they already had, now they also have a position control here. And this position control has these offset parameters. And the interesting thing is that they are percentage values. So if I, for example, say I want to have an offset in y direction of 100%, now then it moves exactly as much as the text itself is high. And if the text is twice as high, then this would also move it twice as far. So let's say here at the very end of our animation, we want to have an offset of zero, of course. And we also have here a pixel offset and let's keyframe this to zero too. So here we've got these two keyframes now. And now here where this text should start appearing, we want this text to move as far as needed to exactly disappear behind this line. So we first set an offset of 100% to say move exactly as much as the layer itself is high. And now on top of that, we need a little bit more. This is exactly the margin that we have below the text. And this margin is not depending on how large the text itself is. Yeah? So it would not make sense to use implement this also here as a percentage because the margin here is always the same number of pixels no matter how high the text itself is. So we say we use here a pixel offset for the remaining way we need to travel. And now we've got this animation here. And if you now change the text to a single line, you can see again, it just moves exactly as much as needed and not more than that. Yeah, this is the real power of the position controls that you can say move as high as my layer is or as wide as my layer is or twice as much and also add an offset uh, for the margins. Now currently this is not looking very interesting because it's a linear animation. So let's add here some easy ease and you can see that the easing looks as it should be. Yeah, we start slow, get faster and slow down again. And now, of course, you could do the same with the second text. So say at the end, we want to have a Y offset of nothing. And here where our animation should start, we go now in a negative direction, minus 100% of the layer size. And again, for the remaining margins that we also need to travel, we set here an offset in pixel values. 
Again, let's add some easy ease to this. And now we've got this nice animation, which always moves exactly as much as we need, no matter how high our texts are. If you ever want to get rid of position controls again, it's not a good idea to delete this effect directly, because this will break some expressions that connect these controls here to the actual position of the layer. Instead, make sure that the layer is selected, and instead of clicking on the position controls icon, you shift click on it to remove the position controls. Again, this is Matthias Müll for marmoworld.com, and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.